The sole purpose of this video is to provide a basic overview and orientation of your new apparatus. This video is not intended to act as or replace individualized driver operator training. Individual fire departments may base guidelines, policies, and procedures tailored for best practices. Pierce Manufacturing and Hughes Fire Equipment representatives are not liable for injuries caused from acts resulting from actions inconsistent with the information provided within this video and or accompanying manuals. Refer to the Operation and Maintenance Manual for complete details relating to the components and features of this apparatus. Only trained personnel should operate this vehicle or perform maintenance. You are responsible for learning how to operate this fire apparatus under all conditions without having to refer to the manual while operating at an emergency incident. This video will discuss types of warnings and caution labels. It is your responsibility to locate and identify each of the labels and understand the importance and associated hazards. Warning labels will point out procedure that must be taken or action that must be avoided to guard against the possibility of serious injury or death. Caution labels will advise you that there is a risk of damage to property if certain precautions are not followed. Continuous training, reviewing of operation and service manuals, developing good standardized practices will assist driver operators with a more complete understanding of the components and operation of this fire apparatus. As the driver operator of this vehicle, you are responsible for understanding the function of each component of the apparatus, maintaining control of the fire apparatus at all times while in operation, make operational and functional changes while operating at an emergency without having to read operator's instructions or safety warning labels, operate manual override and emergency shutdown procedures immediately if a component fails to operate properly. Components location may vary with each Pierce Fire Apparatus. Review the exact location of each component prior to operation. Major inconsistencies between your vehicle and the information contained in this video should be directed to your sales representative. Safe operation of any vehicle is the responsibility of the driver operator. You must learn the location and function of all controls, switches, gauges, valves, inlets, and discharges. Due to a higher center of gravity, heavy trucks have a significantly higher rollover tendency than other types of vehicles. To reduce the risk of rollover, avoid making sharp turns, excessive speed, and avoid abrupt maneuvers. In the event of a rollover crash, an unbelted person is significantly more likely to become injured or die than a person wearing a seatbelt. In the event of a crash, unbuckled occupants can also become a hazard to other occupants as they may be thrown around inside the cab. Seatbelts are required while in operation. Please refer to your warranty certificates for details and information enclosed in your manuals. Customer installed equipment must be mounted to withstand road travel and comply with NFPA 1901. Modifications such as drilling holes or welding to structural frame components of the chassis are not permitted. Contact Pierce for instruction and review of non-structural sheet metal or other dissimilar metals for modification. Follow the radio installation guide for further assistance on installing or mounting electronics. Before placing your new apparatus into service, Perform a primary inspection of key components of the apparatus, including all fluid levels, anti-lock braking systems, electronic stability control, and automatic traction control. Weigh your apparatus to ensure that it conforms to axle and brake ratings. Never exceed the gross axle rating printed on the label inside the cab. Exceeding these ratings could lead to reduced component life, personal injury, or death. Review the use of auxiliary braking systems, compression brake, exhaust brake, electronic retarder, and hydraulic retarder. Before placing the apparatus in service, refer to the operational maintenance manuals. 
information on the operation and maintenance functions for the components such as the pump, pressure governor, and foam systems along with other options is provided in either the Pierce manuals and or other manufacturer support information delivered with the apparatus. If you need more information, please contact Hughes Fire Equipment. Congratulations, Banks Fire District number 13, Oregon, on your new fire apparatus, job number 32901. Please utilize this five-digit job number when referencing your apparatus with Hughes Fire Equipment and Pierce Manufacturing. We'll get started on a brief orientation of your new apparatus. Starting just under the front bumper, attached to the frame rail, you'll find two closed tow hooks on the passenger and driver's side. Located up onto the face of the bumper, you'll find your mechanical siren. On the outer edge, you'll find your air horn. Moving now to the bumper extension, on the side of the bumper extension, you'll find a side-facing emergency warning light. Moving up onto the body of the vehicle, you'll find a side-facing turn marker light. Also located on the forward section, you'll find the headlights housing the low and high beam. Let's take a look at the other side here where you'll find on the face of the bumper your PA speaker siren and also your air horn. Moving up onto the grill, you'll find two forward facing emergency lights just on the side of the Pierce logo. Moving up onto the side of the apparatus, you'll find two mirrors right and left. In addition with those mirrors, you'll find convex and flat portions on the mirror. Moving over to the brow of the apparatus, you'll find five running lights. Located at the very top on the roof is where you'll find your emergency warning light bar. Located within that light bar in the very center is your Opticom. Let's take a look now at the side. This is going to be the fender area. This is going to be the marker light turn indicator for the right and left turn. Moving down, you have Alcoa aluminum wheels and also Goodyear tires. Moving just slightly rear of this position, you'll find your aluminum diesel, ultra low sulfur diesel fuel, and then also in the black tank you'll find the DEF, which is the blue cap. In the step area you'll find sufficient lights per NFPA for accessing the cab area. As we move inside the cab you'll find on the seat comfort controls, and as I move downward you'll find this yellow placard, which is the placard manufactured by Pierce Manufacturing Fort Banks Fire District number 13. It does have the date of manufacture, the five digit job number. It also has information here on the gross vehicle weight ratings, cold tire inflation, and then on the left hand side of the placard you'll find all your associated fluids and capacities and types. Let's move downward from this location where you'll find your master battery switch. When your battery switch is turned on, that will energize the entire vehicle. Moving just to the rear of that, you'll find when plugged into shore power, your battery charging system will activate. Just under about the left knee of the operators where you'll find your vehicle data recorder, and on the floorboard you'll find your mechanical siren foot pedal. Let's move up from this location. This is a keyed ignition. There are keys for this vehicle. They also control the outer door locks. As we move up from this location, you'll find this placard regarding your height 10 feet 6 inches, your length 32 feet 1 inch, and a gross vehicle weight rating of 64,000 pounds. This also has your job number, which is that five digit job number in the lower corner. If you make any adjustments to your vehicle, please update this placard. As we move to the dash itself, you'll find the water, volts, fuel, amps, brakes, front and rear, and also your DEF and fuel level, in addition with a speedometer and tachometer. In between the two of those, you'll find diagnostic information displayed at the very top of the screen. As we move to the center section of your cab, I apologize for the blurriness of the image. This is your caution when flashing, do not move the vehicle. You have a compartment door or a door ajar. If your batteries are on, you should get a green indicator. And then also to the right, you'll find your pump shift for engaging for pump operations. You'll see engaged, which is your pump engaged. And you'll see two green indicators indicating OK to pump and OK to pump in motion. As you move further down from that location, you'll find a digital readout regarding your pump pressure. And then further down, you'll find all your vehicle controls for engine DEF regen information. You'll also find traction control information. And to the far right, you'll find all of your axle information for disengaging and engaging the axles. Let's move uh, down from this location. 
where you'll find the yellow pull to apply your system parking brake and push to release. You'll also find your Allison transmission pad. Moving just slightly to the side of that is where you're going to find the Firecom system. This is the wireless base module. And as we move back up toward the dash area, you're going to find a set of switches here. First, we'll start at the very top. These are going to be all of your emergency light switches. Moving further down, you'll find all of your floodlight information. Also have an open door indicator in addition with the flashing red light on the dash indicating not to move your apparatus. Moving further down, you'll find your master tank dumps, high idle, and OK to engage the high idle, load manager, and also a siren brake on the far, far right side. As we move down, you'll find all your firefighting functions, which are going to be for your dump valves to the rear tank, side, and passenger side. As I move to the right, you'll find this seat belt information, indicating red, someone is in the seat and not belted, green, indicating they're in the seat and belted. Below that, you'll find your siren control and PA speaker. Overhead, you have map lights in addition with push on and off red and white lights. Those push on and off white lights and red lights are activated at the individual lens. Located directly in the center for the operator, you'll find your camera mewing system. This is the monitor to view backup system. You also have your wireless headset system here. They are plugged in. Those are for uh, maintaining battery. Let's go ahead and start with your pump area. We'll start with the where the arrow is indicating first. This is your minimum operation maintenance schedule for 150, 200, and 250 PSI test pressures. On the left hand side you'll find the associated GPM and on the right hand side you'll find the RPMs. You'll also find the number one and number two cross light which is directly above our location here. Those are color coded in yellow and white. Let's move now just to the right area where you're going to find this gray section. This is the master intake gauge. Moving to the right you'll find the master discharge gauge. In between those two in the gray area is where you're going to find the test gauge ports for vacuum and pressure. They are currently plugged and should be utilized for testing purposes. Let's move just to the right where you're going to find your Pierce pressure throttle governor. If illuminated in yellow, it would be the check engine light. Located in the center, you'll find a digital readout regarding your RPM. And then moving to the right, if illuminated, it would be in red, would be a stop engine light. Down further, you'll find a menu button, which is the orange button that is to select through the various menu functions. Located directly in the center you'll find engine diagnostic information and then moving to the right you'll find a red silence button which will silence the audible alarm. Moving further down you'll find two blue buttons on the left hand side one indicating pressure the other indicated RPM. Those are your options for either pressure control or throttle control. Located in the center you'll find a digital readout regarding information here. To the right you'll find a throttle ready indicator which will be green indicating it's okay to engage the throttle and moving down into the green area the green preset button which allows you to preset any of your functions ahead of time. You'll also have a throttle left to decrease right to increase and then push in the center for idle. At the very bottom this is your audible alarm the outer bezel is the ability to silence that alarm or dampen the sound volume. To the right you'll find your panel lights you do have an additional pump engaged light here. This is an indicator. And then there's also a spare for future uh, necessary switches. Moving down to the right, you're going to find your water tank level. This is for the uh, level of water that's in your tank for firefighting purposes. Let's uh, move down now to the left hand side where you'll find your fire pump primer. This is an air prime. There are instructions just above that. For enhanced priming performance, run the engine at least 1,000 RPMs. To the right, you'll find the green number four passenger side discharge, and then you'll find your tank fill recirculating line. Let's move all the way to the left-hand side of the pump panel, where you'll find this red placard. Your pump is a Watrous pump, and you can see here the capacity is 1,000 GPM. There's also an indicating here for only trained personnel should operate this piece of equipment only after they receive proper training. Located in the center, the Pierce Logo American Flag Eagle is your large diameter pump intake. And to the right, you'll find where you'll plug into Shoreline Inlet. This is a 20 amp plug, which will activate your battery charging system. To the right, you'll find your pump drain. This is your master pump drain. You're also gonna find a two and a half inch driver's side number one discharge that is red in color. 
As we move to the right, you'll find the number three driver side discharge and also your engine cooler. The engine cooler is a rotate, not a pull, and to the right hand side, you'll find your tank to pump. Let's move downward from this location where you'll find your driver side auxiliary inlet. This is a two and a half inch female inlet. Across the bottom, you'll find all your associated color coded and labeled drains. To the right of this location, you do have an air inlet. Let's move just downward from this location to the actual under section of the vehicle. You'll find LED lighting for your ground lights. You'll also find step lights that are also located just above. The two uh, paddles here that you push in will activate the ability to pull that shelf to the outward position so it's fully extended. Make sure and ensure that it is fully extended and locked for firefighter safety. This is an image showing the step in its outright position. Let's move up to the very top. You'll find two D handles which will gain access to your cross lay on the left hand side and additional storage on the right hand side. This is the number one and number two cross lay, yellow and white. Moving to the side of the pump, you're going to find two fold down steps. As we take a general view here of the apparatus, in the upper left hand corner, you'll also find a digital LED readout regarding your tank water level. You'll also find two scene lights located at the very top and at the very rear you'll find an emergency warning light. Let's move down now to the lower section. You're going to find on the side this is a marker turn indicator. Just up from that marker turn indicator in the front of and rear of the wheels you'll find SCBA bottle storage. These are for single SCBA bottle storage locations and in the center you'll find a side facing emergency light between the two dual wheels. Located to the rear you'll find the driver's side water dump and then also located underneath there we'll talk a little bit about this i've got an image this is your uh, battery uh, minus and positive connection point and also you have folding wheel chocks located just in front of the rear wheels here's an image indicating the positive and negative for your battery close up of the wheel chocks here that we talked about and as we move into the compartment first just above those wheel chocks you'll find in the left hand side of the compartment mounted on the wall is your battery charging system. When plugged into shore power, those shoreline outlets will activate 20 amp power. This is gonna be a close up here of the bottle storage location. When the latch is in the open position, you can see access to inside the bottle area. You do have Alcoa wheels on the rear and also Goodyear tires. As we move up from this location, close up here of the side facing emergency warning light between the tandem wheels. To the very rear section, you'll find SCBA bottle storage location, but it's currently in the open position. And then just behind that is where you'll find your side dump for the passenger side. Close up here of the uh, emergency lights and side facing scene lights. Quick view of the rear of the apparatus. We'll uh, cover some of the items within this area. First, let's start down at the bottom. Underneath the tailboard, you have perimeter lighting. Moving up from that, you're gonna find your cluster housing, the emergency light, brake light, turn light, and then backup light. To the right, you're gonna find three switches here. Uh, first is the driver's side dump valve, and then the other is gonna be the rear dump, and then the other is the rear scene light at the very bottom. You also have two direct access pull locations here. As we move upward on the left-hand side, just next to the step, you'll find this compartment, which houses your long suction tubes. And as we move above that, just a couple of warning labels here for fall injury, be cautious when utilizing the steps and also you should not ride on your vehicle while it's in motion. As we move to the center section of your apparatus, we'll cover a couple items within this area. First, you can see at the upper left-hand corner, you have emergency lights and side scene lights or rear scene lights. Also located in the center, you'll find that LED uh, readout for water tank level. And at the very top, you have a backup camera or reverse camera image. You'll also find directly in the center is your rear dump. It is electric. Moving to the right, we're going to find your hose bed lights and also the passenger side dump valve. Let's move back up toward the uh, center area. We'll cover the item here. This is a direct tank fill. It is a two and a half inch ball valve. The uh, valve is on the right hand side. Once again, just a reminder not to ride on or be cautious while utilizing the steps on your apparatus. Once again, long storage here for suction hoses or long handled tool storage. As we move to the top of the vehicle, you'll find your covered hose bed is fully enclosed in diamond plate. 
You'll also have top access here for your water tank if you choose to fill from the top. But if you'd like, you can open the entire side of the hose bed area and gain access also to the water tank. The next set of images are just going to be that of the top section of your apparatus. Let's go ahead and move to the cab area. You do have a work light located in the very rear section, emergency warning lights on the cab itself. Here's a side view of the rear and passenger side of the vehicle. We have pretty much the same configuration on this side with the rear dump on the passenger side. Directly located next to it is going to be an SCBA bottle storage location. Moving up to the top of the apparatus is where you're going to find those side facing scene lights and also emergency warning lights. Just a quick image here of the tandem axle. This is going to be Alcoa wheels once again, Goodyear tires with the center uh, emergency warning light. As we move forward, you'll find bottle storage location just underneath that, a side marker light. Let's now move to the first compartment here. This is going to be closest to the side of the pump panel. You'll find a D-handle to gain access split compartment. You'll have to reach inside and open the side door. The latch is in the upper left-hand corner. You do have adjustable shelves and LED lighting inside the compartments. As we move to the side of the vehicle, you'll also find at the very top a side-facing scene light. And then also for the passenger side, there is also an LED water level indicator. Let's move down to the very bottom. This is going to be perimeter lighting located at the very bottom. You also have step lights illuminating the step itself. Same configuration as the driver's side, where you'll need to utilize the two paddle push-ins to deploy the actual step. Remember to deploy the step fully until it's locked in its locked in position. Here's an image with it locked in a full open position. Let's go ahead and move through next at the very bottom is your uh, cross lay, passenger side, discharge. These are your drains for the upper locations. You'll also find your passenger auxiliary inlet, two and a half inch female ball valve. And you'll also find your passenger side large diameter pump intake behind the American flag Pierce Eagle logo. Behind the access door is where you're going to find access behind the pump panel. This is so that you can gain access to your relief valve setting. You'll also find two two and a half inch discharges located on this side. First, the number four discharge, which is in green, and the number two. These are going to be all indicated in even, as in two and four. You'll also find at the very top access point here for gaining access behind the pump panel. Let's move now to the cab section of the vehicle. I would like to point out extremely hot diesel exhaust temperatures and be cautious as to where you place your hands. There is a grab handle located on the actual uh, exhaust stack. As you move to the very top, you also find a mirror so that the operator can see downward just rear of the front tires. You do have two grab handles on the passenger side to gate entry into the cab. The seat is also fitted with comfort controls located on the right hand side of the seat. As we look just a general view here inside the cab of your vehicle, congratulations Banks Fire District number 13, Oregon, on your new fire apparatus, job number 32901. If you have any questions as to the content of this video or any future questions about your apparatus, please contact your Hughes Fire sales representative. Thank you and congratulations.